How's it going everyone? Alex with Jeeps Limited here. This past 4th of July weekend we set out on an epic adventure to run the 7 hour plane crash trail which starts in Crandon, Wisconsin and runs all the way up to the very tip of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. This trail is nearly 300 miles long and consists of mostly gravel and dirt roads with very little highway driving. We started off by following the trail that's on the Onyx off-road app, and once we got deeper into the Upper Peninsula, we did deviate from that trail and took some other routes that we thought would be pretty cool to see and make it even a little bit more scenic. A lot of people like to take their time and run this route and actually camp on the side of the trail or at various campgrounds along the route, but we decided we wanted to just have one campsite that we'd make it to on the first day that we returned to after finishing the trail and that also gave us a nice home base to be able to explore the rest of the UP from that location. We were able to complete the trail and return back to our campsite in two days with quite a bit of non-stop driving. We didn't stop to explore too much along the way but we did still see some cool sights. On the third day of the trip we spent a lot of time just exploring the local area to where we were camping, which we saw a lot of really cool stuff, including a 120-year-old copper mine in which we were actually able to go into. We also explored some abandoned buildings, saw an old dredge sitting out in the lake, and even saw a waterfall that was probably about 100 feet tall. And next to the waterfall was an abandoned mine tunnel. We don't know what it was used for, but it was wide open, and we even dared to explore that a little bit, but once it started getting too dark, we got a little afraid and just had to turn back. The trail that's marked out on Onyx did start on pavement for a few miles, but then it quickly turned into this uh, gravel road here. It was pretty wide, pretty manageable to drive on, and we drove on that for a little while before it inevitably did turn into a two-track road. But a very large portion of this trail is nice, relatively smooth, wide trails like you see here. Once we turned onto this rougher two-track road here, we did actually stop to let a little bit of air out of our tires just to help with some of the ride quality and maybe improve traction a little bit, but we just aired down a little bit. And it actually didn't take too long on this road before we inevitably had to drop it into four-wheel drive as some of this mud got pretty slick and uh, relatively deep.
it didn't take too long before we actually ran into a roadblock, which you'll see here in a minute, that stopped us in our tracks. Well, we came across this stuck F-250 that's completely buried. There's nobody around here. It doesn't look like he's been stuck that long, but uh, <clears throat> there's no way for us to get him out. There's no way for us to get around this, and that water is swallowing his tire, so it's probably pretty deep anyway, so we're just going to backtrack. We did try and gather some information to see if we could figure out how to get in contact with the guy that's truck was stuck, but with no cell service at this point, we really were not able to. So we ended up just having to backtrack a little bit and took this uh, this two-track here, which took us off the trail a little bit, but we did inevitably loop back around onto the trail. We could have tried to get around the truck there. There was some space there, but we didn't want to risk either hitting the truck or getting ourselves stuck right next to the truck, because that mud hole was probably 35 or 36 inches deep, and it just really didn't seem worth it when we had another route available. It didn't take very long for us to get back on some nice, wide, smooth trails where we could start making back a little bit of time. This leg of the journey actually did take quite a bit longer than I thought it was going to, to be honest. We didn't inevitably get to our campsite until like 9 or 10 o'clock at night, which made for a very long day because we left Chicago about 6 o'clock that morning. From this point on, it was pretty smooth sailing for the rest of the day. Just a lot of dirt, a lot of gravel, and a lot of really awesome scenery. And it is worth noting that from the Crandon, Wisconsin, where the trail started, we went approximately 120 or 130 miles before we actually passed another gas station. So keep that in mind if you're making this journey yourself. You want to make sure you fuel up in Crandon and maybe even consider bringing extra gas with you because this, this leg of the journey from Crandon to the gas station was pretty long. We did have an extra six-gallon gas can with us, but we didn't have to use it. We did drive through a campsite here, a legitimate campsite that was probably about almost 100 miles into the journey in case anybody is looking to make this trip. Uh, otherwise, you can... I think camp anywhere you want on the side of the trail as long as there's already an existing clearing or campsite there. But don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. After getting gas in what I believe was Mass City, Michigan, we deviated from the seven-hour plane crash trail on Onyx to run down the Bill Nicholas Trail, which we did that because of these very large trestle bridges. There's three of them. They cross these massive valleys with rivers in them, and it's an awesome sight. Uh, well worth deviating from the trail to go see these. They're, they're really cool, and the, the view is amazing when you're on them. And of course, we did have to pull the drone out and run the bridge a couple of times just to get these awesome views, but it was well worth the time spent here. You definitely won't get views like this from Chicago where we're from. So this is kind of the reason why we wanted to take this trip is just to get out 
and see the sights and see the scenery. As far as a wheeling trip, it's really not. Uh, there was a little couple technical spots that we got into that you'll see here, but mostly this was just a journey through the UP. It's just a beautiful place and well worth visiting. And the nice thing about this trail is you can run it in pretty much any high clearance four wheel drive vehicle, or even if it's not super high clearance, you can run the majority of this trail. There might be some spots that are a little bit tougher, but otherwise it's pretty manageable. And there's plenty of options to be able to take detours or deviations from the trail a little bit if you don't feel comfortable going through certain areas. So we made it into the town of Hancock, which is where our campsite was. Uh, this is actually, believe it or not, probably about 9 o'clock at night. It doesn't get dark there until about 11 o'clock. Uh, so it kind of throws you off a little bit, but it was relatively late, and uh, we were happy to see our campsite, that's for sure. And this town of Houghton and Hancock was really a, a really cool town. Right here on a river, you'll see us going down the into the valley and across the river. And actually, this is pretty close to the Champion Mine, which is the old copper mine we were able to explore. They actually give you tours, and you get to go up into the mine building itself that sits on top of the mine. And they still have all the equipment in there from when they abandoned it back in, I think, 1967. Very cool town. This was a great place to camp. It had everything you needed in it, too. There was camping, there was grocery stores, gas stations, there was an auto zone. A anything you could need was in this town. So this was a really good place to stop, especially if you're looking for more of like a home base kind of place to camp and explore from. I would highly recommend this area here. Fill your audience in on uh, what you're doing today. Well, I'm just doing some uh, exhaust repairs that I could have done, could have done before we left for this trip with uh, the equipment I have in my garage, but I had elected not to do that. Huh. That looks like it's going to hold really well. I, yeah, well, I probably won't. I th so we're going to revise that plan. I would I would probably revise that plan. Yeah. Take this one off. Not real calm at all. That's good. Huh, actually, you know what? We are gonna, we're going to take multiple steps back. Yeah, we're going to start with... We should clean that. Well, <laughs> I mean, cleaning it doesn't do a whole lot for a hose clamp. But see, there's not really a great way to clean that off. So I'm thinking now, since, see, I'd like to take this hose clamp off and get it out of the way, but it's really stuck on there. You know, it doesn't really spin, so. You want the socket? It wouldn't hurt. All right, let me grab it. We camped at the Hancock Recreation Area, which was a really nice campground. It was affordable, it was quiet, and it was really tucked into the woods and the camping spots were actually pretty neat and, and scenic really and very shaded which was really nice as well even though it doesn't get that hot there. Luckily there's plenty of auto parts stores in town because uh, at some point during the journey my muffler fell off which was actually due to a horrible repair that I had done a few months ago and neglected to actually finish completely so that was a little embarrassing and it kind of sounded like a Honda Civic with a fart can on it for a little while but oh well. I was able to get that fixed and then we set off on day two to actually finish the trail and at one point we had decided we wanted to see the town of Copper Harbor Michigan so we did actually get off the trail and we ran about 15 or 20 miles down the highway just to get to Copper Harbor just so that we could we could see it we wanted to explore it a little bit and it was a good place to stop for gas before we got back on the trail to finish it however once we did that, we pretty much deviated from the seven-hour plane crash trail for the rest of the journey and just got back on it for a brief time to actually complete the trip to the end point, which for us, the end point was actually a old rocket launch pad uh, that's right there on the very tip of the peninsula overlooking Lake Superior. So that was our destination. Uh, we did inevitably make it to High Rock Point, which is the true end of the trail as well, but for us, we set out to make it to that rocket launch pad. That was our final destination. So at this point, we are completely off the seven-hour plane crash trail, and we're driving down Cliff Drive, which is just an old pothole-filled road that we're taking to get to Cliff Mine Drive. It's a trail that we found on Onyx. Uh, it's supposed to actually take you to a cliff overlook. Uh, we never actually found the cliff, which just, just proves our own incompetence. But this trail actually had... Uh, some pretty cool views and actually got pretty rough at one point. There was uh, some deep mud 
and some rocky hills and a very deep water crossing at the end, but it was a really fun trail to drive and actually inevitably took us like an hour just to run this section of trail, but it was also well worth it. This is still on Cliff Mine Drive that we're coming up to. This was actually a pretty deep, nasty, rutted out mud hole, which took me several attempts, as you'll see, to get through. It was it doesn't look too bad, but it was really slick on an incline and very rutted out. So just keep that in mind if you're looking at r driving this trail. It does have some spots that can actually be challenging and are not passable if you're not in a high clearance 4x4. I'm running 37s with lockers front and rear on here just to get through it. That'll be fun. Eric only managed to catch me after I made it through the mud hole, but that's okay. And you could hear a little bit of that fart cannon still, so apparently that exhaust repair didn't work super good. Now, I sped this up about 20 times. It took Eric about 30 tries over the course of like 15 minutes to make it through this mud hole, but he did finally make it through. I had a, the, I was just from probably like another few feet back, just fucking revving it and clench dumping it in third and just fucking basically letting it almost hit, just eat limiter. I don't think I have a I don't think so either. It, like it's tough too because you bounce into it weird, but all, all I did was just carried as much momentum and wheel speed as I could. <laughs> I mean, it sounds fine. I mean, you're definitely, you know, hitting it pretty hard. We're pretty far from home. <laughs> Look at that, I gave him a little advice and he made it right through. Cliff Mine Trail, very muddy today. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that are going to complain and say that we are trashing the trails out there by spinning our tires trying to get through there. But the fact is, we're not the ones that rutted it up. It's a trail out in the middle of the woods. Sometimes this happens. I don't know if anybody's ever going to make it out there to fix the trail, but this is just what happens to some of the trails. When they get wet, they get muddy, and they're being used. It's just what happens. Once we got through that part of the trail, we continued on looking for this cliff overlook, which is got to be off one of these offshoot trails here. We never did find it. We found what looked to be like an old quarry, which started actually taking us back toward the road. So we did turn around to try and finish the trail. And it did take us down a cool rocky hill, which would be a lot of fun to climb up if you're coming the other direction. We were running it south to north. If you ran it north to south, it would be a little bit of a technical climb, but going down it wasn't too bad.
Once we got past that rocky section, it was just a little bit further up the trail before we came across a group of boulders in the middle of the trail, which on the Onyx app is described as a gatekeeper that you'll hit if you're running the trail from north to south. We hit it at the end because we're running it from south to north, but it is just a good warning to anybody that's coming up the trail that there might be some dangers ahead. It really wasn't too challenging to get around if you just go up around the side of it. But it's just good to have there for anybody that's maybe not suspecting this trail would be that challenging. Then at the end of the trail here, you'll see a pretty large water crossing. It was relatively deep, but had a pretty firm bottom, so it's still passable. So this is where we officially got off of the dirt and onto the highway just to make the trip to Copper Harbor, which this road in itself is actually pretty cool because it's just a nice windy road that takes you through the woods. There's not a whole lot of traffic on it. A few cars go in the opposite direction you can see. Unfortunately, it was raining this morning, so that road was a little bit treacherous, I would say, but on a nice day, that would be a really awesome road to drive. This trail here is actually leading north out of Copper Harbor because that highway actually just ends and turns into a dirt road that just takes you to the tip of the UP. We decided to take a couple of spur trails as a detour that did take us down a couple of more technical areas, a couple of rock faces and some rutted out sections that would be challenging if you're not in a high clearance 4x4, but it was well worth the time and well worth the effort for some pretty cool views that you'll see here in a minute. I'm not going to name the spur trail that we're on here because part of the adventure here is actually to take the spur trails and go on your own adventure and see what you can find. And also this road was pretty seldom traveled and I, I think they like it that way. I don't think they want it out there for everybody to know where this is and just come and trash it. But it, it was a fun trail and it was well worth it, like I said, because it did lead to a pretty awesome view here.
the spur trail that we were on ended up being a dead end, so we did have to backtrack uh, and come out the way we went in, but that was worth it for the views. And then we did make it back onto the main trail that does take you to the end of this. And it does get pretty wide and actually passable by almost any vehicle. There was a lot of just stock pickup trucks and SUVs out there. And we actually did at one point see here a camper made it down this road. So if the camper can make it down this road, pretty much anybody can make it down this road. It did have a lot of wet spots on it, but it really wasn't too bad. Here we are finally making it to the end of our official trip here. We are driving down Rocket Range Trail as it's listed on Onyx. This is the trail that takes you to an old rocket range where they used to launch rockets into Lake Superior. And this marked the official end of our trip, our journey. This is where we were trying to make it to. This was our destination. So this was actually a really fun moment to come out of the woods and see, see the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, to see Lake Superior at the very tip of the northern peninsula which is what we we're shooting for so and you really just can't beat that views and for anybody that cares i was able to skip a rock and get it to land out on that rock like 40 feet out into the water so that was kind of fun too after skipping rocks over at the rocket range we did get back onto the main trail and actually take the trail out to high rock bay which is the official ending point of this trail we hung out there for a little while but it was really overrun with people camping there was Probably 30 people set up camping there. Uh, it's a pretty cool place, but we didn't hang out too long because it was crowded. So we did end up starting to head back toward camp, in which we did not take the main trail or part of the seven-hour plane crash trail. We kind of found our own route that we wanted to explore and took a couple of spur trails on our way. After driving another 30 or 40 miles down these dirt roads, we did decide that uh, it, it was a long enough day and we actually aired up and just jumped back on the highway and cruised our way back to camp, which was actually a really nice drive now that this road is dried out and it's not raining. Like I said, believe it or not, it doesn't get dark until almost 11 p.m. So this section right here, it was after nine o'clock. It's probably about 930 at night. So we'd been on the trail for like 10 hours at this point. We're just kind of trying to get back to camp to crack a couple of cold beers and have some dinner and relax. This is a cool trail that we ended up exploring on our last day there, which was close to Hancock where we were camping. It was a pretty neat trail and it seemed like it would just followed what used to be old train tracks and had some remnants of some old bridges. And actually we did find a an old bridge that had been removed and partially fallen down into the river that we were able to explore the ruins of, which was also pretty cool. So this is just kind of part of that, like, making your own adventure thing. This trail was not shown on Onyx. Uh, we, it wasn't, it's on a map, but nobody really knows it's there other than locals. But it was a really cool trail to explore. We had a lot of fun doing it. So part of this was just going out and exploring and seeing what we could find. And I would encourage anybody else, follow the trail. It's really awesome. But give yourself some time to just explore what's out there. Because the UP is just full of hidden things. This here that we're driving by is actually the old smelter uh, from the Quincy Mine, which the Quincy Mine was up the hill a little bit in Hancock. And uh, this is where they would take their raw materials and actually smelt them to separate whatever copper it was from whatever other rock and whatnot that the copper is stuck in. You can actually take tours of this and of the Quincy Mine as well, but we tried to take a tour, but they were booked for the whole weekend, so we weren't able to, which was a bummer. But we did still get to see another really cool mine, which I would also recommend you doing because it was a free tour and you could go into the mine building and see all the old equipment, which was really neat. The mine that we did get to explore is the Champion Mine, which you're going to see some pictures of here. I would highly recommend that. It's actually a free tour and it operates 100% off of donations. It's well worth it. It's pretty close to, to Hancock there. And he, here you can see we're actually able to go up into the building and see all the old equipment, which was really cool, really awesome to learn about. The mine was over 120 years old. They're in the process of refurbishing it just based solely off of donations, which is really awesome. They're doing a fantastic job and they're trying to make more of it open to the public. Here's the waterfall that we explored. We found this by talking to some people that we bumped into while exploring an abandoned building. It's like 100 feet tall, I would guess, and has an abandoned mine tunnel right next to it. You do have to hike up and down this pretty sketchy trail, which was a little bit challenging, but mostly manageable, but definitely well worth the views. 
And then we did find just some old abandoned stuff and some other ruins and buildings that we could explore. And all of this was done 100% legally. There's quite a few other people that are exploring it. And it's just open there for you to find. We found it all just simply by driving down the road and pulling in to, to check it out. So that marked the end of our four-day journey, which was awesome. We had such a good time just exploring and driving the trails and seeing what was out there. Like I said, we just kind of made our own adventure at a certain point, uh, deviated from the trail, but still managed to make it to the end of it, which was really satisfying and a lot of fun to do. I would highly recommend it to anybody if they wanted to explore the UP. As always, thanks to everybody who made it to the end of this video. This was a pretty long video, but it was a pretty long journey and a lot of fun to share with everybody, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, thank you for watching and see you later. And of course, Eric managed to get a flat tire on the way home.